Good morning, church. Good morning. Y'all, we have the amazing opportunity to not give God the same. Because this ain't no ordinary day, right? This ain't no ordinary worship. Thank you, Miss Pitts. Okay, bringing us back. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Miss Lisa, Isaiah, Dr. Cheese. We appreciate you operating in your gifts um, and allowing God to work in you. I'm not going to be up here too long, but I do want to welcome all of our visitors, if we have any, um, that is currently in the building and or online. We won't forget those that are watching online. If you're a visitor online, put it in the group chat and we will shout you out. I'm not seeing any visitors in here today, but I wanna thank you guys for all being in the building. Um, so if you could just make some noise for yourself for choosing to be present. Excellent. Okay, so we have a lot going on in the month of September. Did y'all know about it? Did y'all know about it? Okay, so this is our first Sunday. This is where we make sure that we repent from our sins and take communion and break bread and, and drink the blood of Jesus, which is the cornerstone of our faith, amen? Yeah. Right? And then our second Sunday, uh, which everyone needs to make sure they register for all the things I'm announcing. So we got a second Sunday registration, a third Sunday registration, and a fourth Sunday registration. But for next Sunday, um, and really it's the whole weekend, the Friday through the 11th, we are having a youth worship weekend. Oh my goodness. You could be excited. I'm excited. You could be excited, okay? All right, all right. So a lot of our youth aren't here today, but the expectation is that we fill this church up with young people from all across this area. It is a Mount Joy event. It's going to be pretty amazing. Um, and then the following Sunday, we're going to back it up with our leadership, our men. We're going to be having our men's day. You can clap for that too. Yes, Miss Pitts. September 17th through the 18th is going to be glorious. The theme is men gaining wisdom, which is so essential um, in this time in our lives. And last but not least, okay, women, I expect you to make some noise. <laughs> yes, the following week in the fourth Sunday of this month, we're going to be having our Women's Day, um, which is going to be September 24th and 25th. So notice that we're talking about the entire weekend. With the youth, it's three days. With the men, it's two days. With the women, it's two days. Um, and so for the women, we're going to be aligning our crowns, okay? Um, empowered with purpose, which is going to be so excellent, and I'm really excited for that. So if you don't know where to get your information, please uh, ask somebody after church. But most importantly, it's on our church page. And please register so we can get all that we need for you and anyone else that you're going to bring. I'm going to encourage everybody to not just do your job and get you here, but be the Lord's hands and feet and invite somebody else. And don't just invite them. Make sure they register. Me and Pastor Jackson and Mr. Keith were just talking about how people need special invites now since the pandemic. you got to be like, no, it's you. <laughs> I need you. Here's the link. Let's go. So don't be discouraged if they don't do it right away, but be encouraged to help them put their name on that registration link and come on through. Amen. So I think I covered everybody. Um, Women's Day Choir Rehearsal, is that still a thing? September 6th, 7.15 p.m., okay? So that's a Tuesday. We are going to be here. So please make sure, women, that you come through. Uh, we want to practice so that when we come together with our angelic voices, we are on one accord, as in Philippians chapter uh, one verse, or excuse me, Philippians chapter two, verses one through five. Um, if you are interested in participating in the Sister Strut, which will be Saturday, October 1st, 2022, please see Ms. Howard today Registration is $40. All right. And then join us for Bible study. And um, I'm going to say this. I think, Pastor Jackson, we need to send, resend the Zoom link out to everybody in our church. But we gather every Wednesday on Zoom to dive deeper into the Word of God, which should be our source. Can I get an amen? amen. Our, the Bible is our source, right? Not just coming here on Sundays where we fellowship and we sharpen and we worship together, but like every day with the church. And the Bible is our guide. So I do hope and pray that when you hear this announcement, it doesn't go in one ear and out the other, but you really think about it. Do I have time on noon, um, at noon on Wednesdays to join us? And we'll send that Zoom link out. You don't have to leave where you're at. Sometimes I do it while I'm working, so at least I'm able to listen and hear what's happening. I'm just going to encourage that. And then we are going to move into our next part of worship which is prayer. And I want to make sure that I allow everyone to know this. You can be in whatever position you want to be. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, you can come to the front, you can do whatever you like to do. But we're going to ask that everybody get in their position of, of prayer as we pray for some of our um, members and others that are on our list, like uh, Miss Sherry Lakes. Um, we have prayers for Miss Shanice Giles, her daughter, the daughter of Miss Sherry Lake, who, who lost her father, Royce Giles. Uh, we're going to be in continued prayer for Ms. Charlene Dozier, Ms. Margie Huddleston, Mr. Tony Wilson, Mr. Keith Williams, Isaac Akers, and then Tracy Mallett. Um, 
And is there anybody else I need to add to the list? Yes. Okay. I, Isaiah, can you tell us the names? And then if anybody else has someone, we're gonna ask that you grab a mic so people can hear what you are saying. But Isaiah, what were their names again? Uh, Sakura Brown Jenkins. Can you spell Sakura? S-E-C-U-R-I-A-H. Okay. And who was the second name? Uh, okay. Thank you, and that's terrible. We're going to be praying because our God's a healer, and he still had them in the palm of his, of his hands, no matter what is happening. Anybody else? Okay, am I praying? Are you praying? Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to ask you to get in that position. If there's anything that was unsaid, we are still going to be lifting that up. So if, you, if we can join each other in prayer. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, move right now, Lord. Fill every body that can hear the sound of my voice, God. Jesus, thank you for loving us and giving us the greatest gift of your love, Lord, which equated to your sacrifice, which gives us the opportunity of eternal life. God, right now, I'm just praying that you prick every heart, believer or non-believer, at this moment, God. And if there's anything within us that's not of you, God, if there's anything we can lay down at your feet, God, I pray we do it right now, Lord. And God, I pray that as believers, we seek you above all things. And if we haven't, God, we repent. And God, that at this moment, we recognize you as Lord and King in nothing else, no other distraction, no, no other physical element, nothing else, God. But right now, in this moment, we give you thanksgiving. Lord, I pray for every human being that doesn't know you for their Lord and Savior right now, that can hear the sound of my voice. God, I pray that you not only prick their heart, God, but you open up the crevices of it, God, and so that they can receive you at this time, God. Maybe it's just a feeling. Maybe it's something that their grandmother told them years ago, God. But I pray at this moment they know that there is a God that has loved them from start to finish, that knew them before they were ever in their mother's womb, God. I pray this moment we give our life back to you. God, that all the, moment, all the parts of us that we took control of and we took away from you, God, we give it back. All the loved ones that we're trying to help on our own without your hand, God, we give them back. God, every broken situation that we've tried to mend with our own strength and our own glue, God, knowing that it won't stay together, God, we give it back. God, for every triumph that we took credit for, God, we give it back. And we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being in control of all things, even when we thought it was us. Lord, I thank you for this moment that we get to fellowship together. God, that we get to hear your word. We get to sing. We get to shout. We get to pray. We get to look around and see that we are not alone. God, that you created us to never be alone, Lord. God, I just lift up Isaiah, this young man, who a couple weeks ago was sitting in front of us, God, open and vulnerable, broken, Lord. I thank you for how you have reached into his heart and into his life, brought out new wisdom, God, new maturity, got a whole new level of thinking. Lord, I thank you for the community that riled around him, God, for him to have the propensity today to lift up other people in prayer. God, I lift up the names that he mentioned, Lord, and, and Sequoia and Vince and a, a grandfather, God, that was in a terrible accident, God. We're praying for their healing, God. I'm praying for their hearts, Lord, that they know you as their Lord and Savior, God, that they know no matter what happens, they have eternity with you, God. And if that is not the case, I pray this situation bring them to their knees at your feet, God. Lord, I just pray for their healing. I pray for all that's touched in that situation, God, the people that were hitting, the people that did the hitting. God, that you protect them, you provide them a way to see you in a clearer way, God. Help us to love better. Lord, I lift up Sherry Lakes, God, who's home, Lord, um, recovering from surgery. All those recovering from surgery, God. I thank you for her life and her sweet, sweet spirit, God. We know she'll be better now than what she ever was before. 
God, I lift up Tracy Mallon in the same way, God, that she be better now than she ever was before, that these six weeks allow her to realign herself physically, mentally, spiritually in your will, God. Lord, I lift up Miss Charlene Dozer, who's also healing God, her children, her husband, everyone that rallies around her, God, heal her, protect her. And I pray she come back in these doors on fire, God, from the situation that she has survived. Lord, we lift up Margie Huddleston, who's also healing God, that she have a faith the size of a mustard seed to not sit in pain, but walk, get up, move, get blood in those vessels, dear Lord, and know that her purpose is still fresh today. God, we lift up Keith Williams. God, I pray for his healing. God, I know that this is a trying situation, dear Lord. I pray that this situation bring him closer to you in faith. God, that he do what the doctors say, Lord. God, that he be a man of obedience right now, Lord, and he find joy in every breath that he has. I lift up Isaac Akers. God, I pray for a kidney to come on that list, Lord. And most importantly for him, no matter his situation today, to serve you with all that he can and all that he has. That he be an example on and off that football field of a man that's seeking you above all things, God. That those young people see him as a leader, not just as a great football player, but as a man worth following. I pray the same for Dante Howard, Lord. God, I lift up Tony Wilson. I pray for him, and I pray for any other human being, God, that's on this list. I thank you for Nick Thomas, who is making his way back home, God. I thank you so much for keeping him while he was away, Lord. I pray for all of our service men and women that are sacrificing their life, God. Those abroad and here, Lord. Those that have suffered as veterans and those who are suffering right now and those who are serving with all their heart. I lift up our teachers and our students who are back in school, God. Lord, I just pray for a mind to listen and to give and to teach. I pray that our students get fed love and knowledge, God, and food. Lord, that is good for them to produce what you have called them to in this season. Lord, I pray for all of our service men and women, police, fire, whoever else, God, cover them. Lord, I just pray their safety, and I also pray for their right mind, that they operate out of love, Lord, and not out of stereotype or bias. You're in control, Jesus. I pray for Pastor Jackson, God, that you just fill this man, that fill this man of God, Lord, with your spirit, so that what he preached today, it go out because we know it won't go out void, God, but that it ministers to his own soul today, Lord. It ministers to every human being in this building and online, God. Lord, that he, his cup runneth over when he sit down, Lord, and that we come around our pastor and we pray and we lift him up, that we just don't see him as someone giving, but that, that we too can give so he can receive. We love you, Jesus. We pray for his entire family. We thank you for Kim being here. We pray for her healing, Lord. We thank you for her face, Lord. We thank you for her family. God, I thank you for Ms. Jackson, Antoine, and Alex. Thank you, God, for keeping them. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask this in your name. Sake Jesus. Amen.
Spirit, you are welcome here, and not just in the building, but in my heart. We're talking this morning in Sunday school about God's presence and how you know, and uh, we got to look for him, you know, and see if he's calling us. And see if he's speaking to us and, and, and know what he's saying to us. And when the Spirit of God comes in, uh, that's when we find peace and trouble. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right here. Amen. Amen. Sometimes trouble's so thick around you that you need to just slip away. And get out of there get into the presence of God and, and, and be comforted by him. Sometimes our, our minds get so busy and so, so locked up into everything and uh, uh, we need to get out of that sometimes and let our mind be on him. Amen. We're grateful for another day's journey. We're grateful that God has blessed us uh, to be here uh, not because we're all that, because he is. Amen. Uh, we want to remember to be praying for Rochelle uh, also. Pardon? Dunaway, Rochelle Dunaway, and we, we know her. That's uh, the granddaughter of Sister Brother Houston right here and Sister Shirley Laurie. Um, now, and, and we'll be coming in Wednesday, and I'm going to spend an hour and prayer. And you can come join. And, and, uh, it's not going to be any entertainment. It's going to be time that I'm going to be spending with God. And sometimes we don't take time. If it's not a big lecture, if it's not something else going on to keep our, you know, but we need to just, you know, I, Jesus used to steal away. And just take time to fellowship with the Father. And I think we need to. I, I, it helps to spend time with God. A lot going on this week, and sometimes I got to check with God so I can do it right. And I may think I know, but I check with God anyway. We're glad to see our family, Lisa, Lisa Kim, Jacob. We got some more around. I guess they, maybe they'll get in on time. I don't, I don't know, but 
uh, we, we, we had a house full, uh, and, and, and a house full of little, little people, and little people, they just, you know, they, we love them. They ain't kind of messy, but we love them. Here, here, come, here comes more. <laughs> uh, but, but God, you know, it's, it's good to be around people. Uh, uh, no, okay, we didn't mention that men, the men are rehearsing uh, this coming Thursday and the following Thursday at 6.30. This coming Thursday and the following Thursday at 6.30. So we get ready for men's day, and we're rehearsing at 12 noon uh, the Saturday. Have I got that right? 12 noon. Okay, okay. Amen. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Good to see my good friend Key John today. Amen. Key John. All right. Raise your hand, Key John. Yeah, yeah. Key John and gruesome. You know, if you didn't, if you missed him in a year or so, you you might not recognize him. <laughs> We get honor God's word by standing. Hebrews chapter 10. It'll be on the screen, I think. And I'm, I want to read 11 verses. Is that too many? Let's read it together. Uh, for, by, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days says the Lord I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more now where there is a remission of these there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking from ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Uh, uh, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. And let us consider one another to stir up love, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And uh, I want to talk for a minute or two about drawing near to God and, and holding on to your faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The stuff that we have that we want to keep. You, you ever have something good and somebody trying to get it from you? <laughs> Uh, my, my, my grandsons were, were uh, I don't know, what the, was, was it an iPad? That, but they, they, they both, there was one iPad and they both wanted it. And the, the one who had it was holding, the one who wanted it was pulling. You know, if you got something good that you value, that you want to keep, you got to hold on. Because if it's really good, somebody else wanted it too. And I, I said before that we all have an enemy who is going to and fro and up and down trying to see who he can devour. Or who, who don't have their faith tight? Let me grab it. 
Now, if, if, if you know me, let me start. You know that I'm not an alarmist. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I try hard not to get overly excited and, and make a big deal out of nothing or anything. Amen. Yeah. So when and if I tell you that there's a problem, you know there's a problem. Those who were born before 1990 uh, remember a, a cartoon character named Chicken Little. Anybody remember Chicken Little? Uh, he had a habit of, of getting alarmed and, and, and overreacting. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's why they called him Chicken Little, I think. But, but and one day, Chicken Little was walking down the street, and an acorn uh, was carried by a, a wind gust or something from a nearby tree. He wasn't walking under the tree, but this acorn hit him in the head. And Chicken Little got all excited and went all over town telling people that the sky was falling because it hit me in the head. Now, I'm not Chicken Little. I, I'm not one of those guys who gets excited and goes off the deep end about stuff. I, I, I try to be calm and deductive. I, I, in fact, I, I pride myself as being, being a, a pragmatist. Hey, Amen. I try, try to, you know. I'm not overly surprised when trouble comes up, but I know it, it, trouble comes. And we got to face it sometimes, all of us. I, I realize that challenge is unnecessary. So I, I don't really spend a lot of time worrying about what has happened or what will happen. But having said that, I, I have to tell you today that we are living in perilous times. You may not know it, you may not be paying attention, but it's rough out there. I, I, I've never seen the, the kind of turmoil and, and chaos that I see going on in our, our society today. Uh, th th there are a whole lot of strange stuff that's happening now, and, and uh, hatred and um, bad stuff, and malice are, are, are growing between various groups, you know. And, and because we're different, we don't have to be enemies. There's always been differences. Disdain and dislike of one, nation, one nationality toward all others has become normal. There are people out there today, I don't know if you know it or not, but they're willing to kill you because you, you belong to a different party. We have individuals going around intentionally Admitting that they're trying to start a civil war. Half the people in this nation no longer see truth as important. And, and whether people have compassion for you or not depends on what group you're in. The common tenets of faith that we all grew up on are no longer vogue. Somebody say, if we ever needed the Lord before, we should have needed him now. But fewer and fewer people are confessing faith. And if they confess it, they've changed it to suit themselves rather than suiting God. Our, our faith is being tested, and many of us are, are denying what we once claimed to believe. Our nation, the United States, is being destroyed from the inside out. It's funny, this 10th chapter of Hebrews highlights a religious transition from the Old Testament law and Judaism to New Testament grace. And the time of the law when, uh, 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 when sacrifices of animals were being made in order to cover our sins, uh, that was being phased out and replaced by a time when Jesus had come to die in our place, shedding his blood to cleanse us from our sins. 
and they, they were using sacrifices before, but uh, when Christ came and uh, the Bible said that he was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. We went to Georgia a little while back. In fact, a couple times, and my wife saw her mother, uh, her mother, she's 89 and be 90 soon. And she had some, some pants on that were gotten too big for her. She's lost some weight. And she had a pin in them, you know. So my wife went out and, and, and bought her uh, some brand new, couple of brand new pants. And gave them to her and then and we uh, went home and these new pants were fitting better but we've been going back every three or four months to check on her but the next time we went back she noticed that her mother had those same <laughs> two big pants with a pin in them <laughs> on Even though God had given Israel something much better than they had before, they wanted to keep what they had. And, and, and uh, my mother-in-law, she, she, she had some new pants that were nicer and better and fit better, but she kept on wearing what she was wearing. Uh, the, the Jews were being asked to throw away what they were used to having and replacing it with something new and better. And, and no longer would they be slaves to the law that Moses gave them from God. Their justification w would now come by their trust and acceptance of Christ and what he did on Calvary for them. So th this was a whole new deal for these God-minded folk. All right. Men, women, boys, and girls could, could now qualify for eternity with God by accepting Christ and having faith in what he did. The law that Judaism valued so much was now exposed as insufficient uh -huh. because it was powerless, even with the sacrifices to take away the stain of sin. Uh, you see, what, what the law did and the sacrifices that uh, the blood of animals covered the sin but not wrong. Uh -huh. And before the year was out, that sin, uh, that, that sin was visible again and, and they were responsible again and they had to sacrifice again. But when Christ came, yeah, yeah. the sacrifices could stop. Uh -huh. That's why we don't uh, have an altar where we kill animals here. We bow, we bow our knee and we humble ourselves before God and we accept the Son of God who died for us. When I read that verse, the last two words, I mean, uh, uh, verse 14 says, For by one offering, yeah. he has perfected. You know, uh, we do some stuff, but it ain't, you know, you ever do something, but you didn't have it quite right? And, 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 and God was about saving us, and we're about being saved. Uh, he says, but for by one offering, he has perfected yes. forever those who are being sanctified. And, and when I read that, I said, I, I was, uh, it caught my attention because it said being sanctified. Uh, he was perfected forever those who are being and I don't hear much around here. Uh, people don't say that I, I grew up attending Southern Baptist in Madison uh, during my, my, my school years. And in the summers, though, I would go to Villa Ridge and we'd go to the Church of God in Christ. Uh, and those churches, both Southern Baptist and Church of God in Christ, uh, they were Bible-believing, Bible-preaching places yeah. uh, where God was worshipped, uh -huh. even though they were different flavors. I, I call religions flavors. There were different flavors of religion. And back in those days, uh, uh, at both places, testimonies were a big part of it. And I used to hear people testify all the time that they were saved or, or they were sanctified, past tense. 
We got some people in church nowadays who've already arrived. Huh? Already saved, already sanctified, already, already perfect. Past tense. And, you know, and I can't read nobody's mind, but it gave me the impression that they were already in a state of perfection. That was okay, except for the fact that I also observed some actions in almost every case yes, yes. that didn't match what they were saying. I, I've since learned that uh, I'm not anybody's judge, but, but, but to, my, to my then 12, 13, 14-year-old mind, it sounded like they were bragging about being something that they, that, that, that they weren't. Maybe I missed it, maybe I misunderstood, but it sounded like that they were declaring that they had made it. Nobody talked about, nobody talks about a process that they're still in the midst of. Nobody said that they were being saved or being sanctified. And I don't know what, 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 what you were taught in the past, but uh, this passage tells, tells me that sanctification is a process. Yeah. And all we can brag about is that we have consented and that the Holy Spirit has started that process in us. Yeah. Now, step one, God loves us. None of this could happen. Uh, uh, mankind wouldn't even be here if God didn't love us. Now, now hearing the word and believing the love of God, uh, that's step two. The Holy Ghost, the, the, the Holy Spirit of God draws us to trusting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Huh? That's step three. Now, 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 the second part of that uh, same step is we are joined in the Spirit to God by the Holy Spirit, and our hearts are changed or begin to change by it. Then comes the process. All right. Then comes the, uh, well, the changes begin. And in conjunction with our, 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 our reading our Bible and our, our studying our Bible and, and our, our, our being guided by the Holy Spirit and, and our prayer, we begin the process of sanctification. We begin to become, listen to me now, we begin to become more like Jesus. No, and, and that's the step all of us are, are in right now. Raise your hand or, or, or say something if you're in the chat if you notice yourself changing. You know, I, I, when I look back 20 years or something, I don't recognize me. And, and maybe this time next year I won't recognize me. Because something has been happening to my attitude, something has been happening to my, uh, uh, my want to. You know, it, it, it's one thing to keep a law. Because it's right to keep all off. And that's really not me. <laughs> but it's another thing to want to. And, and, and what God does for us and what we need is uh, we, need, we need to have our want to's changed. Following a rule because it's a rule is one thing. Loving somebody because God told you to love them is one thing. But loving them because you want to. Because they get, people going to give you a reason not to. Huh? And the only way you're going to love folk is that you want to. The only way that you're going to be obedient to God is because you want to. Folks been cracking the whip forever. Getting people, uh, well, they're going to put you in jail if you don't, you know, but people do what they want to. God has, God is changing 
I want to. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong when, when, when you have been uh, a member of, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Too many of us, and you need to ask yourself about it. Uh, some, some, some of us have been in church for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And there's no change. I don't know about you, but I, I'm glad God changing me. Huh? I, I needed some adjustments. <laughs> Uh, the writer of this passage goes on to talk about a, a covenant God cuts or makes with those who trust him. God promised to put his laws not on stone tablets like he gave Moses. Not like he gave Israel. Uh, it was a 430 something. I don't but in our hearts and on our minds. You, you know, uh, uh, one of the restaurants that's really prosperous now is, uh, uh, what's the one they close on Sundays? Chick-fil-A. Chick everybody going to, and, and, and what makes them special, uh, what, what made them notable is when, uh, when you say thank you to them, they say my pleasure. I, I, I'm not doing this because I'm doing it, it's my pleasure. I get to do it. Imagine that, that, that we loved our, our brothers and our sisters and loved our God and, yeah. and, 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 and lived out of pleasure. Uh -huh. Is my pleasure to bless you? Can you imagine that? We ain't got to suck it up and do it anyway because we're feeling something different. Uh, many of us come to church sometimes Others of us tune in on Facebook sometimes and, and, and know that I, I'm glad you do. Uh -huh. oh, we're happy to have you, but don't think that you have arrived at where you need to be just because you showed up or tuned in. This is not a duty thing. God wants your heart. The thing that God looks at is your heart and your mind. And, and I, I love the part here where it says that our, our sins and our, our lawless deeds, he will remember no more. I don't know about you, but that take a load off my mind. There's some stuff that I did a long time ago that, that, that for, for, for a long, long time, Satan reminded me and, and, and tormented me. Yeah, I remember when. And people will do that. You, you, you mess up and people will never let you forget it. But this, this scripture helps me because uh, it, it says that I don't have to be tormented by my past mistakes. I don't care what you remember. God says your, 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 your lawlessness and your, your, your bad acts, I remember no more. Ooh, wow. I, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Even as stank as we've been. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. Just like we peer. And let God know what we want. Why? Because our heart is there. What part of you does God have? I, I'm glad, you know, I ain't got to keep beating myself up for what I did when I was 16. And I did some stuff. Okay, I, I got some good news. Anybody up for good news? If you have faith in God that ties you with Jesus, if you have the spirit of God alive and active in your heart, you can come boldly before the throne of grace. You see? And you don't have to hold your head down and hide who you are. 
You can talk to God uh, one-on-one. Uh, uh, we don't have to be ashamed. I, I, I can remember some time that, that, I, uh, that, that, I, that I prayed and I made all these big promises to God. And, 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 and uh, when I got ready to pray again, I remembered that I didn't keep them. And you ever been ashamed to pray? Uh, we can snuggle up to God and know that he accepts us because of the blood of Jesus. And I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but uh, for those of us who, who are, are serious about our faith relationship with God and, and that relationship has, has been strained lately, we got a chance today to review and maybe revamp. For a little while during the first part of COVID, they made us stay home. Verse 22 says, uh, uh, draw near to God with a true heart. And it says, in full assurance of our faith. Uh, when, 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 you, you know, when you ain't seen somebody for a while and, and, you, know, and you, ain't, you ain't touched base, uh, uh, you lose something. But you don't have to wonder if you're saved or not. You can get close to God. Listen to me now. God don't have grandchildren. You can get close to God and make sure. And when you get close to God, if, if there's something that don't need to be, he'll check it. It says here that he sprinkles our, our hearts clean from the evil conscience and, and washes us with pure water. And, and I get happy just thinking about how, how God can, uh, can, can fix you up, can, can take you in and, and, and make, you know, you've, anybody ever messed up real bad? I, I, you know, I, I ain't talking about total lie. I mean messed up bad. Yeah, yeah. So bad that you, you, you shame that anybody know it. God can cleanse your heart, Amen. cleanse your conscience. Um, I, I found out that most, I did a survey, and most people uh, who are not regular churchgoers feel convicted when they come to church because of what they've done. But if they knew the love of God, if, if they knew the, uh, the, the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, if they knew that we haven't arrived yet, Amen. you see, they could come boldly. God is calling us today. God's calling you close to him. You may have to take off your shoes, you see, so he can assure you of your faith. Uh, somebody's streaming now. Uh, he wants you to get off your couch, get out of your easy chair, slide back from the, the, the breakfast nook, come in and fellowship with people of like faith, renew. Or you, you may get a message, but it, it, it's, it's more to Worship than that. It's more to being a Christian than that. Uh, the Bible says that we ought to come together and we ought to encourage one another. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be in here loving on each other. Are you there? Are you fully assured of your faith? You know, COVID has, has shaken some faith in this country. But there's nothing better on you than, than, than snuggling up to God. When my kids were little sometimes uh, and mom would get after me, they, they, they just come sit on my lap. <laughs> and know it was better. When life gets after me, Life will get after you. When life gets after me, 
I snuggle up with God. I, I, I get in God's lap. And I know I'm safe then. Now is the time to draw near to God and stay there. The Bible says, hold fast. Satan trying to take it away. Hold fast. We, well, we need to hold tight to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. How faithful are we? Too many people have stopped being faithful. When is the last time you practiced your faithfulness? When is the last time you, you took the time to review your relationship with God? Oh, okay, Pastor, what? what well, why, why are you bringing that up? You trying to jet? No. During the COVID pandemic, and then since the COVID pandemic, many of us have altered the way we live. Many of us have tightened our, our belts on what we do and what we don't do. And I, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but one of the things that, that we have to cut back on uh, are in some cases. A lot of us completely left out worship. Schedule out God. Check your schedule today and uh, relative to uh, God and faith and worship. Sometimes we may turn Facebook on and, and listen while, for a while uh, while we do other things. But many of us, uh, 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 right. we reschedule corporate worship and praise in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And you may not want to hear it, but I, I'm here to tell the truth. Uh, uh, even when some of us come out, we, we think about leaving instead of why we're here. Yeah. And it's funny because we can take a chance. We can take a chance on, on, on going to the grocery store. Yeah. And we can show up at Walmart and places like that, and we can take a chance on going to the hairdresser or the barber shop. We can even take a chance on going out to dinner, the restaurant. Take a chance on going to work. Man, everybody got work. But we're still missing when it comes to worship. We can't afford to take a chance on God. And my question is, can we afford not? To take a chance on God. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you. Uh, being close to God is a whole lot better than not being close to God. Uh, the writer in our text goes on, and I'm just about to, uh, in verse 24, to remind us to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Somebody needs to speak up for God today. Yeah. Somebody needs yeah. to, to, to encourage their friend who has fallen by the wayside and, and slipping and, and, and remind them uh, what confidence faith gives you. Yeah. All of us know some folk right now who could use some encouragements toward love and good works. Amen. Amen. The problem we have now, and, and this is the crust of what I'm, I'm trying to say to you today, too many of us have forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. Uh -huh. We're waking up every morning, but our, our minds are not on, you see, I, I woke up this morning, my mind stayed on Jesus. We're still waking up, but our minds have changed channels. Some of us are raising our children without the teaching that they would get at Sunday school. Without the praise they would learn in the youth choir. Uh, too many of us are, are, are going on, are on in our marriages without the benefit uh, of the second Sunday marriage ministry. 
And the truth is that, uh, that, that, that some of us have, have allocated church time and, and, and worship time to something else. And I, to me, something else less important. I, I was talking to a young man the other day, and let me just tell this, and, and I, I knew him for a while, but he had never shown any interest in God. Mm. Invite him to church, he kind of, you know, well, you know, not show. And because he also didn't show up on jobs, this particular young man had run into some serious financial problems, and he was about to have his car repossessed and be kicked out of his home. And, and when somebody asked him what he was going to do about it, the situation, he replied that he was going to pray to God and hope that somebody helped him out. And I, I, I couldn't bring myself to, to address that right then, but uh, how do you call on God and expect God when you haven't communicated with God forever? Yeah, yeah. Your God is a good God. Yeah. Well, that don't make sense to me. Uh, too many of us ignore God until we get into trouble, and then we expect God to come through for us. It is of the utmost importance that the people of God come together to worship so they will know God before they need him. And it don't, it don't end there. Uh, we, need, we, we need to come together to fellowship and encourage one another. It's important that we come together to push one another toward righteousness. Amen. You can do better than that. Huh? Some of us have lost our faith. But what do we replace it with? That time that you used to allocate to God and, and you're doing something else now, is that better than the time you spend with God? Christianity replaced Judaism, and, but it was better than Judaism. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wonder, when, when you replaced God with whatever, did you get a better deal? Mm. Satan is trying to take our faith away and leave us with nothing better than our own thinking, our own decisions. I need God's influence. I, I, I need God's point of view in my life. Sometimes my thinking is not right. In a few months, uh, summer is going to be over, and many of you know that the, uh, the birds fly south to avoid the, uh, uh, the bad weather. And every time I see that, uh, and you know how they fly in this, they fly in this V? And I read that they, they can go 40% further because the ones in front break the resistance and the ones in the middle kind of coast along. We can do better. We can go further if we're together. A couple of years ago, we, we, we went to Alaska. And uh, one of the things that really impressed me was those huge trees they got in Alaska. I mean, huge trees. And I don't know if they're the kind we got in California, but uh, what's that tree they got in California, the real tall one? Okay. And, and you know, I, yeah, the redwood, you know, yeah. And, and they tell me that the roots of those trees, those trees are, some, some of them are, are, are 60, 70, 80 feet high. They tell me the roots, many of them, are only 12 inches. I thought they'd have to have some long roots. But, but if you find out, they go down 12 inches, but they connect down there. And when the wind is blowing one tree, it's got to, it's got to pull all of them over. The reason we fellowship is the connection we have. And if I see you leaning, I can hold you up. If you see me fall, you can pick me up. Well, we don't have that connection. Satan can come and take either one of us out. It's the connection. Well, one more thing. Uh, the, 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 the penguins live in 40%, live in 40 degrees below Fahrenheit, I think. And if you look at them individually, they can't live like that. 
But they live in groups that they, 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 they bunch together so, so, so close that uh, they, they tell me that uh, in the middle of the group is 70 degrees sometimes. And they stay warm because they stay together. That's what this church is all about. We stay warm. We stay safe. Because we stay together. Don't get out there by yourself and lose your faith. There's a reason that we have that. I don't know where you are today. But check your closeness to God. And also check your closeness to your brothers and your sisters. If it hasn't happened already, let God change your heart. Know that you're not there yet. But know that God can get you. And, and, and together, together we can see what, what stuff I can't do, Cunningham can, or, 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 or Howard can. A cheeseburger can. And I can ride on their dime. And they can ride on mine. That's what this thing is about. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for paying the price for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for the process of, of sanctification for changing our hearts, Father, uh, because it's not just the rules of what we should and shouldn't do, but our hearts that want to. And Lord, give us the grace to want to. Touch those who are weak, Lord, that they might become strong by fellowshipping, by, uh, by just trusting you. And touch those, dear Lord, who have fallen by the wayside that they might get back on board the ship. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for bringing us together. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us together. Give us grace, Lord, to, to stay on the wall, to build the kingdom for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If you're looking for a place to fellowship, we invite you to come. If you've invited Christ into your heart and haven't told anybody, this goes for you in the chat. You ought to tell it. You ought to type it in. I'm starting that progress of reconciliation. I'm starting that progress of sanctification. I haven't made it there yet. I still got some rough edges. But God's changing me. But you got to stay on the wheel before you get, if you're going to be molded. Will you come? If you're in a chat, step out on faith.
see there are none in Yathraya's room. Does everyone have a communion packet? Does everyone have communion? Brother Cunningham has them right there. If you don't have one, please. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 11 reads, uh, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take and eat. This is my body. We're talking about uh, uh, the, the change from Judaism and the sacrifices. Uh, Jesus gave his body, uh, and, and his body was broken so that ours wouldn't have to be. His, shed was, his blood was shed so that ours wouldn't have to be. He said, break it and, and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We need to give some thought to what he did for us. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Thinking about him. Uh, this is not a measure of how good you were. Now you need to have faith to do it. You need to have trust in Christ to do it. But th th this is not a symbol of, of my perfection but a symbol of my celebration of what Christ did for me. He paid my fee, my, my debt. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, outside of faith, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man or a woman or a boy and a girl examine themselves. Don't you examine me. You examine you. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unfaithfully, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Yeah, God may check you. You get close to him. But it's better for God to check you and you be chastened by him than be condemned with the world. Sometimes God, sometimes God has showed me myself. And God ever showed you, you know, and sometimes it's ugly too. But I can do better when I find my, when I see it. And my prayer is that God will show us us. So we can stop looking down on others. And be welcoming them as brothers and sisters. Let us eat and drink.
may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.